Elsa's emotions when she saw her mother at the end was so powerful. I enjoyed it. Main concern was the third act felt really rushed. Felt like they spent too much time shoehorning in songs that could have used for plot. The plot that was there was actually interesting. Just needed a bit of time to develop certain ideas. Another half hour would have done wonders for it. Using the classics Alamanda, Gnome, Undine, Kelpie, Sylph, Elemental Quartet was cool. Didn't expect that. Also, while Kristoff's aborted proposal attempts were funny, that story was already played out. Would have liked to see more attention for Elsa, maybe finding a friend, and maybe, if Disney wanted to be ballsy, a girlfriend. Embrace the internet conspiracy theories about her. Alas, that's asking too much when you are trying to sell toys. But one of those things, would have been cool. I loved it. It has a lot going for it. It was emotional, funny, intriguing, adventurous, and had an air of mystery that is never clearly resolved, explained, which is something I miss in a lot of modern fantasy tales. The story was its themes of change, inevitable, and choice, love, and furthering the original movie about coming into your own and figuring out who you are and who you want to be, often not easy. These things can take sacrifice and suffering and doubt. I think Elsa made the right decision to hand over the throne to Anna, and then start her new, true self-life in the North, it was very her. She was not really satisfied staying in Arendelle and ruling, and only took the throne out of duty. Into the Unknown is all about how what she wants to do is not these things, in fact. I loved her songs. Kristoff could have had a bigger role. But I loved his heart-sick ballad and it has always been primarily Anna and Elsa's story anyway. I particularly loved the scene where he was practicing his proposal with Sven, and that horrified mother was shielding her child's eyes. There's one thing that kind of annoyed me that would have, in my opinion, perfectly fixed Kristoff's role. At the end, I would have liked Anna to propose to him. It resolves his conflict of wondering if he's good enough for her been a fitting moment for her personality, and just a really funny moment to subvert our expectations. I still have no idea what this movie is about. It was a beautiful mess. I was really, really disappointed with this movie. The entire plot was disposable. The ending made no sense. Every tear-jerking moment didn't land, because it was never believable. Olaf had some good quips. Christoph's solo was fantastic. Really had me laughing. Everything else, blah. It really surprises me how I haven't seen anyone mention how short-sighted and immoral Anna's decision to destroy Arendelle and the Fjord was. Not only that, but the film portrays this morally great choice as a no-brainer, and that destroying the dam is the right thing to do. Was shocked and in disbelief the rest of the film, especially the way, no one, questions Anna's decision. It was just the city itself. They had evacuated everyone at the beginning of the movie. The trolls were keeping them away. Everyone's possessions would have been lost, but nobody was actually in Arendelle anyway. Just came back from seeing Frozen 2, it's so disappointing, seeing I unexpectedly loved the first Frozen. The storyline is so bland and boring. Actually think it needed a villain or some sort of conflict, but there isn't one whatsoever. Only liked one song the whole movie, the rest was unmemorable. Things I really loved were dresses. Gosh the dresses designs Anna and Elsa were a stunning, great voice acting and beautifully animated. Yep, that's it. Side notes, Kristoff didn't do anything this movie. Anna is super overprotective, don't understand why Arlef didn't melt, and the ending I was not happy with the stupid decision they made for Elsa. How was Elsa's decision stupid? I thought it fit her character perfectly. Anyway, Anna's protectiveness for her sister is absolutely normal, and she was right to be worried because Elsa died. Don't understand why Arlef didn't melt, when we first see Arlef, Anna says, 
I see you're enjoying your new permafrost, or something like that. I guess Elsa gave him a magical upgrade off-screen. I loved the movie, but had complaints. They knew we all knew the girl that saved their dad was mom, right? And even if you didn't, once they reveal it with the shawl, scarf, you instantly understand Elsa's role, and that plus the lazy songwriting compared to the first really oofed it. The only thing that kept my eyes glued was the fact that I do love the characters, visuals and camera work are mind-blowing. There was only mystery, and no real conflict in the movie. I wish Elsa was dead set on believing the voice she kept hearing was her mom or something, only to have it revealed it was her calling herself. It doesn't even change much from the final reveal in the actual movie, but in my opinion, it's just a more tasty carrot and it would have set up some conflict between Anna and Elsa. With Anna unconvinced but struggling to maintain her promise of support and sisterly love, until it culminates into some magnificent over-the-line argument. I would have really loved an emotionally heart-wrenching scene in the boat where Elsa, unconvinced that her mother is not the voice, goes manic and summons the water to replay their parents' death, with Anna not giving consent, pleading not to do it only for both of them to have to witness their parents' death together. I feel like a statue of your parents in their literal last moment would be a lot more traumatizing than it was in the film. They can even have an argument ending with Anna in tears and angry, still refusing to let Elsa go to the island alone, only to be tricked like in the final film, which enforces the whole unrelenting sisterly love thing. The music was a step down, not that Frozen One songs hold a candle to Moana's, but I did like the actual movie. Although, I just finished watching the movie. So maybe I have to sit and ruminate on this, so I can start to see what people dislike about this. I love singing, and you all look a little bit older now, and looking at the camera got me. Was nowhere near a child when I watched the first film but dang it really has been six years. I feel like there is a severe underappreciation for Aleph playing charades because of how early it was in the movie. His impressions of Mickey Mouse and Elsa's Let It Go sequence had me rolling. And the fact that Elsa was so awful at it while trying to act out ice was hilarious. I love how they specifically shot down Frozen 3. Are we going to go on another dangerous adventure? No? That's it. We're done. Starting back from when the first teaser came out, it caught my attention. And nod out to the marketing team at Disney for sure. They really came at us with a mysterious trailer that got me asking questions. Over the last week I've been super duper excited to watch the film. I'm a Disney fan with a ton of bias so yeah, lol. That aside the movie is just beautiful. Disney's obviously still got it and they deliver on visuals spectacularly. Each song choreographed and tuned up. Elsa's scenes showing off her powers were unquestionably incredible. I felt like my eyeballs and my soul was opening up to understand the beauty of the universe. And I could die happy not ever seeing the Grand Canyon. LOL. I enjoyed this movie a lot. The animation with water was very beautiful. Little Spiro was adorable. This movie was essentially a Thanksgiving movie, when you think about it. All the parts about their grandfather reminded me of the Thanksgiving story. Right when the dad said, for some reason they attacked us, I was like, yup. The grandfather ordered the attack, like the pilgrims essentially did to the Native Americans. The songs were generally worse, but the story was so much better. I loved it more than the first film. This movie was really weird for me. I feel like as soon as it started picking up, it suddenly ended. This wasn't as good of a movie as the first one, but damn that was deeper and darker than I was expecting. Like, it ultimately ends up being a story about the long shadow of colonialism while invoking the classical elements, Greek and Norse mythology and wherever the 
Water has memory thing comes from. Oh, and it kills two of the main characters, albeit temporarily, and leaves another one basically singing about her utter depression and hopelessness. There are going to be so many little kids either scarred by this film, or have it go totally over their heads. Unpopular opinion. I think Frozen 2 is better than the first one. I really love everything about Elsa in this movie. And Anna didn't go full annoying like Aurora in Maleficent as well. She has her own job. 8 out of 10. I kinda want a man for Elsa. LOL. Wholesome. Great songs. And 10 out 10 animation. Kristoff's solo song had me cracking up.